Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Great. Uh, we this is the twelfth practice we've just finished, and I've, I've never seen the energy for twelve straight practices that I've seen with this team. And I ask uh, Sam Howell and Jeremiah Gimmel to address the team after practice and just tell them what they saw. And and they talked about uh, uh, more confidence than the Orange Bowl. Um, people are still talking about all the people we've lost. That uh, they're they're talking about. Uh, uh, that gives a little bit chip on the shoulder of, of moving forward uh, because they shouldn't be talking about what we've lost. They should be talking about how good this team's going to be next year. Uh, but we've had 12 really good practices, and, and uh, I think that's also a credit to the improved depth. Uh, a few things to touch before I start answering questions is uh, the recruiting calendar being opened up by the NCAA uh, has got us back to a lot of questions now. Um, I'm glad the young guys will be able to take unofficial visits. They'll be able to take official visits and they'll be able to come to camps now. But then you have to start uh, re-answering questions like last summer. What does that mean? Do they have to have a uh, uh, negative COVID test before they can come on campus? Uh, do they, and, and participate in camps? Do the parents have to have negative COVID tests? Uh, do they, what does the vaccine mean to camps. What about official visits? What about people that are showing the prospects around on official visits? Do they have to have the vaccine? Do they have to have negative tests? Uh, do prospects have to have negative tests before they come to campus? How many people can you have at camp? How many people can you have together at camp? If you're having junior days, uh, how many people can be in the building at the same time? So we're, we're back to um, so many questions that are unanswered that we're all trying to, to look at those uh, at this point. Uh, the second thing is that the, uh, the one-time transfer rule, we said um, the, they have to make a decision to go in the portal by July 1st. Next year, it'll be May 1st. So starting next week, we're gonna have some uh, great conversations uh, with our team about where they fit. And there'll be uncomfortable conversations in some cases because you're, you're going to have to tell people you're not going to start based on where we are right now. You're going to be a special teams player. You're going to be you're going to have a limited role. Um, and then we could have some players leave and we don't know that they'll leave next week or we don't know that they would leave uh, until July 1st. But you're getting at a point where it's really, really hard to replace those players. I've got a few a few numbers for you here. There's really two waves of transfers. There's a wave after the season because people are unhappy, so they're going to go into the portal. And then if they stay uh, through Christmas and early January, most likely they're going to stay through spring practice. And then there will be another wave of people leaving after spring practice. Um, so right now that there have been 1,894 people in the college transfer portal. That's 1,894. A few withdrew and went back to their teams, but 1,345 are still active in the portal. Only 467 have matriculated. So that means 25% of the guys who've gone into the portal have found a place to go. That's just 25%. So that's an issue. That's a real problem because now with people not having extra scholarships because of the uh, extra year of the guys on each team, there aren't a lot of scholarships available. So um, that, that's an, an issue with these young people that are in the portal that if they can't find a place to go, uh, then they're, they're going to be in, in bad trouble moving forward. And I think that the biggest problem with the portal would not be your team and your roster management as much as it might be a position. If you have three running backs leave this time of the year that all get mad, or if you have two quarterbacks leave, it's too late to replace them in a lot of ways. So uh, what happens, and the other thing is if you, if you have already signed your 25, then you can't sign anybody else because you, you don't have room for any more initial counters because everybody that you sign has to count the first time they sign with you. So you have to have uh, 85 of those and basically 25 a year. You can count some back or forward, but but that that's basically it. So 
uh, that that's uh, the issues that coaches across the country will have uh, in studying at most of the academic schools uh, like we would consider ourselves being don't have as many in the transfer portal because a lot of the kids that we've signed come here number one because they want to be at this school it's the other reason we've tried to sign people in our footprint because people that are closer to home are less likely to transfer. But a lot of the schools, I saw one school had 90 people that have been in the portal. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that, that's a, a huge number moving forward. Um, the spring game on Saturday uh, will be like a game. We're, we're still trying to figure out what we're doing for kicking. The game will start at 345. I think the broadcast starts at three o'clock on ACC Network. Uh, but we will have a, a full scrimmage. Uh, the game it will be tackling, um, and it, it uh, should be fun. We just got to figure out the the kicking parts of it. Uh, Brian Anderson has a wedding, so he will not be able to attend. Uh, we'll have some guys that are out because of injury, uh, but we feel like that uh, everybody else that uh, is available on on Saturday will will be able to play. Questions? Okay, thanks, Coach. Our first question will come from Jacob Turner. Hey, Coach, you, you just quickly mentioned the, the kicking game. We haven't really talked about the, that position group a ton this spring, but how is that group shaping out? I know you got Ben Kiernan back, um, Grayson Atkins, Jonathan Kim. How is that group kind of shaking out? And have you seen any improvements from them this spring? Yes, Jacob. Uh, Jonathan Kim has not participated in any practices because he had a lower leg injury in uh, the offseason. So he will not be available for Saturday. And, and Jeremy will give you all those names and numbers before, before the game. Uh, but he will, uh, he will be available, obviously, for summer. Uh, but he, is, he has been out. Ben Kiernan has had an outstanding spring. And um, Grayson Atkins has not missed since the first day of practice. So we feel like that uh, with our added depth, the fact that we added uh, Larry Porter, another full-time uh, special teams coach from Auburn to our group. And then we, we have coach uh, DeWitt here for his second year um, that because of that depth will be playing better and fresher players on special teams and we should be much better. Okay, uh, over to Nicole Arbach. Yes, sorry about that. Um, hey Mac, um, I just wanted to ask you about what you were just talking about with all the, the transfer rule and all the impact of that. Um, mostly about the initial counters. Um, is there a, I'm sure you've thought about this a lot, like would you change it to a certain, a different rule? Like how, how would you approach that element of, you know, the fact that guys are getting stuck in the portal or maybe you, you mentioned, maybe you do lose a couple guys from a position group in the spring or something like that and you're and you are stuck as a coach. Nicole, the, the, the new rule changes right now are very fluid. And I think we're all going to have to learn what that means. Um, I've thought about with, with Billy High, our recruiting coordinator, the, the uh, uh, initial numbers a lot. And you would like to think that if you sign 25 guys, for instance, and then you lose 22, right now you can't sign anybody else to replace the 22 you would like to think that there would be something in place where you could replace mass numbers if you lost them, but you don't want to have a rule in place that would encourage coaches to run off the average players on, in their spring training to bring in better ones. So that's the trouble with adding more initials. Would people be fair or would they just try to improve their roster by, by trading up? as such to to a better player in in the transfer portal and the other thing nicole is everybody's looking at the transfer portal differently it's not going to be big for us uh we hope i mean it, it would be to replace uh, points of needs like we got ty chandler to come from tennessee this year uh, but we have not found other guys that we're interested in uh, that we could get because we said we only want to, want to take a starter. And, and then you've got to be careful that you don't disrupt your room. So all of us are trying to figure out what this means. Some people have coaches hired just to recruit the portal. Some people will take nine, 10, 12 guys, uh, which is a, a, a mini signing class. And then we're all looking at the initials. 
um, we've got, we, we only signed 18 this year. So we've got a lot of initials left. Um, so then because the NCAA has said they're not going to give us any relief on the 85, your initials and your 85 come into play. So it's both. So we would be caught up on the 85 next year, uh, not the initials. So that's, that's where I think we're, we're all looking at. What does name, image, and likeness really mean? Does that mean three players at some of the top schools in all sports or maybe five can enhance their image? Because we're not helping 600 athletes on Carolina's campus with name, image, and likeness. It's helping very few. And we spent so much time talking about it, but what impact will it have uh, on our guys? Uh, we're trying to figure out ways to let all of the guys um, Im improve their, their status and their brand and their marketing when they get out. And we think that's what name, image, and likeness will be for us. But these scholarship numbers are an issue just like next year. Uh, is it fair not to have initials where some people are going to lose Let's say people lose five players next week. Well, we can't replace those five uh, because we don't have five uh, available. So uh, that, that's what I think everybody has to look at, Nicole. Greg Barnes, go ahead. Hey, Matt, we talked to Don Chapman this weekend and he mentioned playing the majority of that scrimmage at nickel. And I know uh, Jacurius Conley said that he's, he's played a lot of snaps this spring at safety, uh, what are you up to in the secondary? What, what's your, your plan and having guys play so many different positions? Greg, the first thing would be that we're still cross training. We're, we're, we're not sure COVID's gone for sure. And even if it is, for whatever reason, we've had a, a significant amount of injuries in our secondary. So we, we want to get number one, the best 11 on the field and number two, we do not want to get short of corners if if three guys get hurt like we've like we've been at some cases for the last two years so the the other part of that is jay and i are working really hard to find out what the best position for each one of these guys is um we, we've played okay at safety we haven't played great so jaquarius Connolly is a tremendous athlete and don chapman is really savvy and and he's he's tough and he's He's, uh, he's really responded well to nickel. And, and Connolly's done a good job at safety over the last week. So more than anything else, we're, we're not looking at schemes right now as much as we're looking at personnel. And even in the spring game, we will not have game plans. We're not going to sit there and Phil and Jay aren't going to work against each other to figure out how they can move the ball or stop it. We are totally looking at people because we still need to have these conversations after the last scrimmage. and. And we promised the guys that we would divide it up into three, five practice sessions. So we're in that last phase now. So who are our pass rushers uh, after we get through? And I'll, I'll have a recap with, with you folks probably two weeks after spring. And we'll know if some people are going to transfer. And we'll know who's going and maybe where they're going. But that's the biggest thing, Greg, at all those positions we're really looking at uh, who can play slot on offense. Who can back up Josh Downs? Who who are the outside guys? Which ones of those running backs do do we have to play them for for certain things that they do well, or can we interchange them like we did the two last year? Um, so I think more than anything else, it's just that cross training, trying to get more depth, and finding out who's best at each position. Great, thank you. Thank you, Dina King. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. We've talked to Jeremiah a lot and. He's so intellectual about things. Uh, have have you? Do you think he could be a coach when his playing days is over? And and have you talked to him about that possibility? Well, I, Dana, absolutely, he could be. He's he's uh, one of the smartest players on our team, uh, especially with common sense and related to football. Uh, I think probably Jay and Tommy would tell you on our defense, he's the, the smartest uh, about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I had him address the team a few minutes ago, as I said, and he was great. Uh, but I haven't talked to him about coaching. I, I do think he'll be an NFL guy. And the NFL people that came to Pro Day this year, we're talking about him next year and how well he plays and how productive he's been. So uh, I think he's another guy probably next year that, that will be in the NFL draft. 
And then after that, we definitely love to have him back in coach. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Andrew Jones, go ahead. I just want to talk to you about the backup quarterback position. Uh, you had Drake now for 12 practices and Jacoby's had almost a full year now with the, the spring last year or the fall last year and getting into spring now. What can you tell us about what you've seen from both of them as far as growth goes and, and how close is uh, Jacoby from being in a position where if something happened to Sam, you would fully trust him with the full game plan? Andrew, the um, you go back and look at Jacoby didn't have a spring last spring. So this has been uh, very important. To, for him for his first spring. And then the interesting thing, when you study these early enrollees, they didn't have a season. They didn't have a spring or a season. And it's so unusual. Normally, early enrollees are coming off a of spring practice, a fall season, and an off-season program. And these guys had nothing. So they've, they've really done a, an amazing job uh, to transition to college without any of that help. Uh, Jacoby is playing better right now than he has since he's been here. He's had some good practices. He's very talented, uh, but it, it, it hasn't transitioned to the field as well. I thought the last two scrimmages, he's, he's handled the drives well. He's handled the, the offense well. Uh, and I do think he's getting closer to being ready to play. Drake right now is very much like Sam was his first spring here. We've told Drake not to worry about it. You're very talented. You're, you're very smart. Learn the offense. Learn how to practice. But, but don't be fighting for a job right now because Sam pressed a little bit in that first spring and, and it's happened with Drake some. So we want him to be relaxed. And then we will be able to uh, let those two guys compete all summer and let them compete for the backup job in the fall. Um, to answer whether you, you, you feel like somebody could come in and take Sam's place right now, uh, I'm not ready to, to go there yet. I'm, I'm hoping Sam gets to stay in until we need him to come out. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, uh, let's go over to C.L. Brown, please. Hi, Mac. Um, this isn't a question, but uh, have you ever had a player you let out for spring for for a wedding before? It, that sounded kind of different when you talk about Brian Anderson. That's no. Not I love O'Brien and O'Brien's pretty embarrassed over it. His brother's getting married and uh, he had no choice. And if, if he, uh, uh, and you know, we didn't know if we we're going to have spring practice for COVID and we didn't know when the dates were going to be and all that. So I think it probably just got a little off track. Okay. Uh, the, the question I was wondering was what, what do you want to see on Saturday in the scrimmage that you haven't already seen uh, through these early practices? I want to see effort like we've seen for these 12 practices I want them to have a lot of spirit. I want them to be physical on both sides of the ball. And the, the biggest thing I want, CL, is, is I want some clarity. So we've got a lot of good players at a lot of at a number of positions, and, and they continue to separate. So Thursday's practice, uh, we'll grade this one this afternoon. Thursday's practice, we'll have another really good practice to, to try to get to that two deep, and when we can, a, a three deep. Um, and then Saturday scrimmage will be just that. I, I will leave the, the stadium and, and I'll start grading it because I want to see clarity and I want to see separation. And we, uh, Tamari Fox is out all spring. A.J. Beatty's out all spring. Some of those guys will have their chance again in the fall with, with preseason work. But uh, other than the young guys, it's really, really important to me that we're honest with our players. And if you're going to be a backup, and if you're going to be on the kicking game only, um, and you want to be a starter, we need to tell them the truth right now. And and if, if and we want them to stay, and if that's what they want, handle it, and handle it with a great attitude. If not, and you want to transfer, then we need to get on the phone because you look at those numbers, it's not guaranteed that you can find a place to go. Usually the great ones have a place to go. We've seen that. But, but the ones that just go to the portal, it, it's not as easy to find a space. So I want to see, um, I want to see what guys uh, step up and make opportunities. For instance, we've gotten great clarity with the depth on our offensive line right now. Uh, last year we were fighting to have six, and I feel really good that that uh, when Ez gets back, 
uh, and he'll be back when we start summer workouts, that uh, um, Q Johnson uh, and William Barnes can all play with the blue unit. So we actually have uh, eight guys right now that would be in the first unit. And that's what we're trying to get at, at each position. And then you've got uh, Jonathan Adorno and, and uh, Caden Baker that are getting close. But, but through summer and, and preseason camp, you'd like to get it to where you could play 10. And, but right now we can play eight. And that's much better than we've been since we've been here. And, and, and then William Barnes can play guard and tackle. Q uh, Johnson can play center and guard. Um, you, uh, your start, EZ can play tackle and guard. So the same thing that we were talking about with our safeties, you, you've built in really quality depth there because of crossing over with positions, but also uh, we wanna see how Caden Baker and, and Malik McGowan and, and uh, Jonathan Adorno and uh, Diego Pounds, we wanna see those guys Saturday and our offensive line is gonna play good. We know that. We wanna see the backups and see how they play. So Saturday for us will be a, another really good evaluation uh, in a, in a full type game. Okay. Let's go over to Davis Wallace, please. Hey coach. Uh, I didn't know if you heard about the soccer league, they're considering doing a super league. So I was just wondering, do you see that something happening with college football? And if so, Guys, what teams would you like to be in a Super League with? Davis, I, I don't know. I, I, I saw it mentioned. I haven't read about it. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Uh, but I would think that probably if I talked about a Super League right now in any place instead of the ACC, new commissioner Jim Phillips would probably get me fired. So uh, I'd have to say right now uh, that Super League is going to be the one we're in. All right, now let's move over to Aaron Beard. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Mac, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the guy, Sam and, and Jeremiah talking about guys that you've lost, you know, and then, but the chip on the shoulder coming from that. But it is a lot of skill position talent that is, has gone out the door and heading to the NFL. How much of a security blanket, is, I guess, is Sam's experience of in the offense when, it, when you're talking about breaking in so many different pieces and having a quarterback who has proven he can elevate guys around him. Yeah, Aaron, you, you go back and look at last year's college football playoff teams. They all had great quarterbacks. You look at the NFL in the, the last two rounds headed toward the Super Bowl. They all had great quarterbacks. So modern day football, it's not just defense and kicking game anymore. You got to score points. And if you don't have a quarterback, it's, it's really, really hard. Um, and, and we've been so blessed. You go on the road uh, to a, a rival game at Virginia Tech, the first game. You don't want to take a young quarterback on the road. You, you take an experienced quarterback on the road. So uh, I do feel like that uh, we're probably more like we were two years ago in, in the running back room right now with that lack of experience with uh, Michael and Javante and some question marks. We're probably the same in our receiver room. Because at, uh, at that time, Diami and, and Daz were both dropping some passes and, and we were inconsistent with, with Bo as well. Uh, but all of those guys came forward and, and, and played really well. So we're, we're hoping that just the, we continue to improve with, with uh, growth and experience in those two rooms. Uh, but there's absolutely no doubt the fact that we've got Sam Howell gives us a, a, some uh, margin of error until those guys can grow up. Okay, over to Ross Martin. Hey, Coach Brown. First, I hope your move went well yes, uh, last week. <laughs> well, I'm having to sit, Ross, because I can't stand up. I'm, my back's hurting. Uh, uh, and, and don't think it's over. I think there's a, it's a, we're in the second quarter today, I think. So it, it's, not, it's not there yet. There you go. Uh, and then my question, um, you know, looking at y'all's defensive line, there's a lot of, you know, second year players, third year players, and definitely some, some young guys in the mix. It seems like you have the bodies, you have the size you want. It's wondering kind of what you've seen from guys like Christian Varner, Kevin Hester, Kedrick Bingley Jones, we haven't heard much about, Clyde Pender, you know, the names of guys that you are, are definitely fighting for 
substantial reps uh, this season. I think you're muted, muted coach. Got it. Sorry. My paper must have hit something. I think that uh, obviously one of the biggest uh, changes, improvements that we needed to make was uh, the, the strength and depth of our defensive line against the Notre Dames and, and the, the Texas A&Ms. Uh, not only did they wear us out, uh, but we thought they physically beat us down. And, and that was really important. So uh, Ray Vahasik has had uh, an outstanding spring. And, and he's a guy that uh, uh, he's a little undersized. So unlike uh, him playing 60, 70 plays, he, he probably needs to play 40, 45 plays. And he's really quick and talented when he does that. Uh, probably the guy that's improved the most in that interior is Kevin Hester. He sprained his ankle a little bit four or five days ago. He's fought through it. He's still been practicing. I think he'll play it on Saturday. Uh, but he's 6'5", 305 pounds, 310 pounds, and is really moving well. And, and then Miles um, um, Murphy dominated the, the practice this morning. He was all over the place. I, I don't think I've um, – I haven't seen a guy dominate a, a practice like that. When you call out names, uh, I just kept saying 88 and 88 and 88. So uh, whatever he ate for breakfast, we need to make sure that we find out what it was and, and get him to do it before. Clyde Pender is rushing the passer really well. He's a little undersized. So we've got to figure out how much he could play uh, against the run game because we've got to do a better job of stopping the run on first down than we did last year. And we feel like those big bodies can do that. Uh, Tamari's out. Um, so he's he's not out there this spring and, and hopefully he'll be back. Um, Christian Varner has, has done a good job, um, but he would be, uh, probably right now a situational player. Um, and, and your three that would be in there the most would be uh, Vahasik, uh, Hester, and Murphy. Uh, Binkley Jones is, is coming off of his injury, so he's, he's, doing, he's doing well. He's gotten a little bigger than we would like for him to be. So, but right now he'd be an interior guy. He can't play outside. So Hester and, and um, KJ – right now would be the interior guy. And um, you would put, uh, um, you, you'd put uh, Clyde Pender in there in passing situations more than not, because we've got to come out of this with our six to eight best pass rushers. So we got to have the big bodies for the run, but this game has changed on second long and third long to a point. You got to have all pass rushers in because they've got the flares, the screens, the draws, uh, they've got quarterback draw. Uh, they've got to rush the passer. So the, the game has changed. And I think, Ross, you'll see us using more different packages uh, than we've ever seen because we have more players. So your, your Des Evans can stop the run, and he's a great pass rusher. So he can stay in there all the time. Cayman Rucker has is, is really had an outstanding spring. Uh, Jeremiah just called him out uh, as, as a guy that stepped up this spring a few minutes ago to the team. And then, of course, you, you've got the Chris Collins, you've got the um, Pyrone Hoppers, you've, you've got the Taman Fox uh, that all have a little more experience, and they can rush the passer too. So we're getting better in those positions than we've been. And, I, and then you've got uh, um, Keyshawn Silver, who's at 300 and probably nine pounds. Uh, he's gotten a little big, and he's had a sore ankle, so he's fought through some of that. But really impressed, too, with the pass rushing ability of of Javari Ritzy as a young guy. So he's he has shown up a lot. So I, I think we'll see him in pass rushing situations quite a bit. Did I miss one, Ross? Uh, that was very good. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And and Ross, the other thing that, that is really significant for um, our recruiting, uh, Sally and I fixed a house up that's 0.98 miles from my office. And that means that uh, unofficial visits can come to our house because if it's more than a mile, you can't come to the house from campus. So we do think that'll be a huge help in recruiting. Awesome. Can't wait to check it out someday. Thanks. We'll close up today. Our last question comes from Chapel Fowler. Hey, Mac. Um, over your career, how have you kind of handled um, 
playing early enrollees in the spring game because I guess that's technically their first game in the stadium with a significant amount of fans and with, with this group and their unique situation having not played a game in over a year um, what would you like to see from them specifically those 12? Chapel I would say that they'll be really excited number one uh, to be in the stadium that they've been looking at over the 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 young part of their football life here and, and having their dreams. But we played Sam the first snap of the spring game two years ago. And um, I, I think uh, I tried to figure out how Coach Longo was going to figure out which of the three quarterbacks start. I think he went rock, paper, and scissors, and, and Sam won. So um, we're going to put them out there and let them go. I, I think a big part of this is I want to see Power Eccles. He's looked really good. I, I want to see Ra Ra. I want to see him run. I want to see Dontavious Nash. Uh, you start looking at these guys, and and the three young wide receivers are are really talented. Um, it, it's it's always a question mark of how much can you give them in the spring, how much will they improve over the fall, and then can they compete for jobs in in the summer in preseason? Um, because they each one of those guys is looking better and better, but how they will they respond in front of people? And, and we will not only see their ability on Saturday, their effort, their confidence, but also how they handle their presence uh, in, in front of a, a crowd. So that'll be one of the more important things for the young ones. Uh, Ty Chandler's played against Alabama and Auburn and Tennessee and Georgia and Florida. He, he, he's he not going to be big eyed. But those other 12 now, they, they may get the big eyes when they walk in there for the first time. It'll be fun to watch them. Great. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We always appreciate it. Thank you all. And Jeremy, we'll get you caught up on the uh, injury report on Saturday before the game. And then uh, we'll wait a couple of weeks. But when you all think it's best, just tell Jeremy and we'll, we'll have a, a recap of spring practice. So I can tell you um, hopefully something more about depth chart, if we can get to that point. And also uh, injury reports for the summer. Um, and if anybody decides that they'd like to go somewhere else. Okay, thank you. Awesome.